What's going on? This is Ryan with Automatic Comics, and we just got a response today from CGC on this comic reholdering scam or scandal, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so we're going to go over that response, what it means, all that kind of stuff. Let's check this out. All right, so before we get started, please remember to hit that like button and hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content like this. So I wasn't planning on making another video on this CGC reholdering scam. Uh, basically, I felt like the first two videos I had put out, as well as all the other content that's out there from other creators that's on the forums, all that kind of stuff, really covers everything that was known up to that point. And so I felt like anything else I made was just going to be kind of like rage bait or you know, clickbait, that kind of thing. Uh, but now that we actually have an official response from CGC, I felt like it was important to put this one out there, uh, especially since I had put out a couple of those videos specifically about this topic. And I know that other channels have already put out some responses to this. For example, uh, Mickey over at Swaggle House Comics and then Neo Cards and Comics uh, have also put out responses. And so you can go check those out as well. But I know we all have different viewers and I think it's important that we try to reach as many viewers as possible about this or as many collectors as possible about this. And so I wanted to make sure I put out something that at least touches on it as well. So first thing, here is the response that CGC provided on Instagram. So I'm going to read through it real quick. We've got the Certified Collectibles Group, which is what CGC is part of because they grade lots of different things, uh, which includes Certified Guaranteed Company, is aware of an incident involving an individual tampering with CGC Comics holders. Based on our initial review, we believe that the incident affects a few hundred comic books. CGC exists to protect the collecting community, and in the last 36 years, we have certified more than 85 million collectibles, each one backed by a comprehensive guarantee. The trust we have built with our community sometimes makes us a target of bad actors, and despite our vigilance, this individual tampered with some of our holders. If you purchased one of the books that this individual tampered with, we will ensure that you are appropriately compensated for losses arising from any failures in our services. We expect to share a list of books that we believe are impacted as soon as possible. We have also retained a leading private investigative service and outside counsel to conduct a comprehensive review of this incident and our processes and to help ensure that this individual is held accountable to the fullest extent of the law. We have already made significant improvements to our processes as a result of this incident, and we will continue to take appropriate steps to help ensure that this type of incident does not happen again. We expect to share more information when we have it. In the meantime, if you have any questions or would like to share any information with CGC, please reach out to us at, and then you have report fraud at collectiblesgroup.com. All right. So that is the official response from CGC. They also have this up on their, on their webpage. If you go to the, the news section and it basically is the exact same thing. It's basically just a, a word version, you know, a text version of that uh, that graphic that was up on uh, on Instagram. Now, just figure we talk about like what do I think about this response? Now, me personally, I like this response. It's a lot more than I was even expecting to see. Uh, now, I know, and I'm with you on this. I know most of us would have liked to have seen some type of response earlier, just something even shorter, where it might have just been we're aware of this, we're looking into it. Uh, even though I think people have heard little things on the back end that they are aware and they were investigating, it would have been nice to have something, you know, early on up front that just gave people some type of peace of mind that they're looking into it. But we did we did get a response, and I do like this response. And, and especially since uh, I put out a poll uh, a day ago, <laughs> like a, a, right before this, basically, uh, and I asked, do you think CGC is going to make a for formal response to the recent grading scam? And 59% said no, and 41% uh, said yes. So most people, you know, 60% approximately also felt that we were not going to get a response. So I think that that's good, at least, you know, we did get a response from this. Now, I have seen a mixed reception <laughs> to this response, but overall, I do really think it's about as good as we could hope for. And I, I think it actually has more in it. And I'm going to go into that in a little bit uh, than I was actually expecting to hear in response. And, you know, if you go through the comments and these and everything, they, they do get pretty nasty <laughs> in there. Uh, but honestly, I think a lot of that hate that comes out of these comments it comes from people that already don't like grading, that don't like third-party grading or, or any of that 
already. And so whatever happens here isn't really going to change their opinion. Uh, they probably just, a lot of people, I think, latched onto this as a good reason to complain about grading or third-party grading. And, uh, you know, so take that with, with a grain of salt. A lot of those individuals, they, they've made up their mind how they feel about graded comics and it's not going to change their mind. And, and they're just going to post negative stuff regardless. So, you know, just in my opinion, take some of that with a grain of salt. Now, with respect to third-party grading, I still stand by the fact that I think it's a very valuable service. And this isn't just because I buy and sell graded comics. I sell raw comics too. You know, if it was just raw comics, I would do just raw comics. But uh, I do think graded comics are a very valuable service. And that's whether it's CGC, CBCS, EGS, PGX, whatever. Like I'm not a homer for, you know, for just one company or anything like that. I do prefer CGC, but that's not the reason that I would come out and say that I, you know, I like graded comics. I think that it has a lot of value. I think it lowers the barrier of entry to a lot of people to get into these hobbies, especially with more expensive books. I mean, there's always been stuff out there. There's restorations, fakes, overgrading, you know, incomplete books, all this kind of stuff. Like if you watched one of my, my earlier videos, I had an amazing Spider-Man annual number one, or my brother bought from a shop when we were kids and I bought it for my brother. Uh, that book was missing two pages. You know, like this was a book from the 90s, like the early 90s that, that we bought from a shop and that shop ripped us off. <laughs> so it's like that stuff has been going on forever. And whether you like the idea of encapsulation or not, if you think you should always be able to read things or not, it does, in my opinion, add that value. It gives you more certainty about what you're getting. And this applies with comics, cards, toys, games, VHS, coins, paper money, all that kind of stuff. The, these things where condition does matter, whether it's restored does matter. And I know there are some people out there that that don't care about that. They would be fine having a low grade copy or a high grade copy, and maybe they would never pay more for a high grade copy. But in the world of collectibles, condition does matter. And the reason is appearance and because it increases its rarity. Things that are in better condition that are collectibles tend to be more rare than the ones that are in worse condition. And so there are reasons why this exists because whether people like it or not, there's a lot of money in collectibles. And so to me, it is something where this does add that value there because not everybody has the time to learn how to grade, how to identify restoration, married covers, pages, all that kind of stuff. Like I had somebody comment on one of my videos where I was talking about married, a married page. And that person said they had been collecting for decades and they had no idea what I was talking about with respect to, to a page being married. And so, I mean, that's, that's just what I'm talking about here, where this type of thing, it makes it easier for people to really understand what they're, what they're buying. But enough of that. Now let's talk about the, uh, the actual response here. So I think the most important thing I saw in here and the thing that I was the most surprised to see was this page right here. If you purchased one of the books that this individual tampered with, we will ensure that you are appropriately compensated for losses arising from any failures in our services. I wasn't expecting to see this response because this is them immediately putting out there that we are going to put money on the table to make people whole for any of these books that we know have been tampered with. I, I really wasn't expecting to see that. And hopefully that gives some people a, a sense of calm that have that know they own one of these books uh, like i've had uh, at least one person reach out to me where they did buy one of these books from this person and they've already reached out to cgc at that fraud email about it uh, and so hopefully that at least like for them gives them some some calm with this now the next one that i think uh, is very important is that uh, is the second line here we expect to share a list of books that we believe are impacted as soon as possible. Now, I know a lot of people have talked about this on you know different channels and, and videos and all of that. And I think that this is also something that's very important. We all were hoping that this is what we would get out of it because when you're submitting books to CGC, it's under an account. Now, maybe this person used multiple accounts, maybe they submitted under someone else. But once you know what a lot of those books are, or at least a, a, some of those books that this user has bought and sold, then it should give CGC the ability to track which accounts those were submitted under, whether it's one or multiple. And that's where that investigative uh, team that they hired and all of that should really help to identify what books those are. So again, hopefully we see that relatively soon. I imagine it shouldn't be too 
big of a lift, you know, to get that out. I realize it's right around Christmas and New Year's right now and, and all of that. But hopefully we do get that list relatively soon um, about which books are affected. Now, the next one that I felt, you know, kind of my order of importance here uh, was, uh, was this one right here. We have retained a leading private investigative service and outside counsel to conduct a comprehensive review of this incident and our processes. So to me, this is important for a couple of reasons. One, it goes with that last one where it's identifying the impacted graded books. And the other thing is this kind of puts that, that threat of consequences out there. It says, and to help ensure that the this individual is held accountable to the fullest extent of the law. So hopefully what this does is if there are other people that are doing this, because I think a lot of us expect that it probably wasn't just one person. We only know of this one person, but if one person has figured it out, there's probably someone else that's figured it out, or maybe they talk to someone else and that person does it too. We don't know. We only, that's all speculation at this point. We know of one person that I've heard of, uh, but this should hopefully make that any other people that have been doing this think twice about doing it anymore, knowing that who knows, maybe they've got serious jail time in the future with this. I mean, if we're talking about hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars potentially in, in comics, I mean, some pretty serious accusations that are part of this. So uh, that's one thing. Also, hopefully limits copycats in the future uh, because there have been, uh, there's a video that was put out recently that shows one way that this could have been done, uh, that these cases could have been opened. And that's the type of thing in, where if somebody watches that and goes, oh, you know, that's a good idea. And you know, they think they should go out and do that. Uh, then this tells them that you might want to think twice before doing it. And I, I'm not sharing that video here. I'm very torn on that video, but it is out there. Now, the other part of this statement here that I imagine got some mixed response was we have already made significant improvements to our processes as a result of this incident, and we will continue to take appropriate st steps to help ensure that type of incident does not happen again. So I know a lot of people would probably like to hear what they actually have changed to help address this, but I can see both sides of this on not wanting to share that information, because if you tell people what you've done to fix this, you are also telling the scammers and then they can work on ways around it. So it's one of those situations where more information isn't always better. And so it might be better that we just don't know what steps they put in place to try and catch this because, hey, maybe it helps them catch more people that are doing this right now. You know, people that think like, oh, I can still get this by. But if they put in some process where they think they can identify these now or have a better chance at identifying them, uh, then that's something where I, I get it. I get not wanting to share that information. Uh, now, the last thing is uh, that, you know, for a positive is this, you know, the fraud outreach right here. So just for anybody that watches the channel, if you do think that this impacts you in any way, make sure that you, you know, you reach out there and uh, hopefully you can be made whole if there were any problems with something that you purchased. Now, the one part of the response that I'd say I am a little critical to uh, is right at the beginning here is uh, this there's a couple mentions in here of an individual. So aware of an incident involving an individual tampering with CGC holders. And here this individual tamp tampered with some of our holders. I touched on that earlier. We don't know if this is just one individual. We know of this one individual, but it's very possible that there are other people that this person either talked with, you know, and shared how they do this with them or that came about it in their own, you know, their own way and, and have been doing this. So, that's just something where I hope that through this investigation that CGC is doing, that they will also be looking for anybody else that might be doing this as well. Because, I mean, they honestly, they may not let us know if they find other people, but they don't want to have those other people out there doing this. I would expect that they would also be going after them if they do find someone else. And what I would be looking for if I'm on that investigative team, <laughs> one of the big things I would be looking for is serial reholders, you know, people that are sending in, I'm sure you can look at the number of, of books that people submit and percentage of reholders that are part of their submissions, that kind of thing. And if you have an abnormally high percentage of reholders, that's what I'd be looking for. I know for me, for example, for books I've sent in for grading, I've probably had 175 to 200 books graded and maybe reholdered. I've probably had, I don't know, 
two or three, not including ones that have like, I've gotten a crack in the case when they come back. I mean, I just, it's not something I've ever really had much of a need to do. And I feel like most of the time you probably don't. Now there are people that maybe really like those custom labels, but I mean, we saw that that's probably what, how this person was doing this and trying to avoid being caught was that if you're just sending in a book to be reholdered that doesn't have any real damage to it, it doesn't make a lot of sense. But if you're sending it in because you want that custom label, it maybe may, that's what maybe their goal was there. Cause we saw a lot of these books had custom labels uh, that maybe their goal was that they were trying to avoid that, you know, perception that they were just sending in for reholders. So yeah, I would be looking for maybe people that are sending in a, a lot of custom label requests and combined with that, a lot of reholder requests, both of those things uh, I think may lead to the potential of someone else that might be trying to do this you know, this exact same thing. So those are my thoughts on this CGC response to this comic reholdering scam that's been going on. Let me know, what do you think of CGC's response? What are your next steps gonna be with respect to comics, graded collectibles, all of that? I mean, if you don't like graded comics anyway, I'm sure nothing is changing <laughs> for you. You're still probably not gonna like graded comics. Uh, but I mean, for me, someone that, you know, you can see back there, I do like graded comics. I, I do like the presentation of them. I do like the added confidence that they give me about them, especially with high dollar books. And so having this response from CGC is very important, you know, in my opinion, uh, but would love to hear what other people think as well. If you'd like to see more videos like this, I've got more videos over here. I've got the subscription button right here. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, I'd really appreciate it. And I will see you in the next video.